Hello everyone and welcome back to another anatomy tutorial. This is Dr. Ayan from the Veteran Anatomy channel and in this tutorial we will continue dissecting the muscles of the forelimb of the horse and exactly the medial muscles of the shoulder joint. Don't forget to watch the previous video where we dissected the lateral shoulder muscles and we talked also about some other muscles which we cut you know to remove the forelimb. So let's get started. the medial view in the medial view uh, again uh, let's go through the muscles which we cut before you know to be able to remove the forelimb completely from the trunk in this case again here we have the latissimus dorsi the latissimus dorsi muscle again uh, start or originate from the thoracolumbar fascia and serrates finally to the teres major tuberosity, teres major tuberosity, this one on the medial surface of the humerus. Um, here we have uh, the pectoral muscles, which we have also to cut. This is all the pectoral muscles, including the superficial and the deep pectoral muscles, extends between the sternum up to the cranial surface uh, of the humerus, cranial surface of the humerus here and the humeral crest and the deep uh, pectoral muscle inserts to both actually greater and this tubercle of the humerus of the humerus just quickly before we move uh, to the topic which is the muscles of the shoulder joint here uh, as we described before we can see the rest the rest of the omotransversarius which is located on the lateral surface of course and here the cladobrachialis we can see just part of it just put it to the side here, here, we can see, firstly, the nerves belongs to the brachial plexus. The nerves we cut also um, to be able to remove the forelimb plus the axillary artery and the axillary vein. Okay, so let's, let's keep to the nerves. So from the brachial plexus in general, there are 12 nerves for the innervation of the muscles surrounding the forelimb here and the muscles of the forelimb. Like the first one, which we can see here, is the thoraco, thoracodorsal nerve. This is the thoracodorsal nerve. How can we know that this is the thoracodorsal nerve? If you follow this nerve, you will find that this nerve innervates the latissimus dorsi. That means this is the thoracodorsal nerve. Some of these nerves moves, as you can see here, to the pectoral muscles. In this case, we are talking about the cranial pectoral nerves and the caudal pectoral nerves. The cranial pectoral nerves for the transverse pectoralis muscle or the superficial, sorry, yeah, the superficial pectoral muscles, both parts, transversus and the descendants and the caudal pectoral nerves for the innervation of the deep, deep pectoral muscle. Now here um, we can find this very big muscle, very big muscle, fills completely the subscapular fossa of the scapula. So this is the medial view of the scapula. Here in this area, we have big fossa called the subscapular fossa. This is the origin of the subscapular muscle. So this is the subscapular muscle originate from the subscapular fossa and inserts, as you can see here, inserts to the lesser tubercle of the humerus, highlighted in blue here. This is the lesser tubercle of the humerus medial serves of the humerus. So from the subscapular fossa to the lesser tubercle of the humerus, this one here, we can uh, talk about the subscapular muscle. The subscapular muscle innervated, is innervated by the subscapular nerves. They are more than sometimes two or three or more. So this nerve, this nerve, and this nerve, all of them are the subscapular nerves uh, from the brachial plexus for the innervation of the subscapular muscle. Just for your information, just uh, remember this name. From the subscap, or let's say, the subscapular muscle originates from the subscapular fossa innervated by the subscapular 
nerve. Okay? Good. Um, here, we forgot to talk about this muscle here. This muscle is very developed in the horse, absent in other animals, like carnivores, very less developed in uh, ruminants. For example, this is the subclavius muscle. Subclavius muscle, according to some anatomists, is part of the pectoral muscles. Subclavius muscle, very developed in the horse. Okay? Good. Another, sorry for jumping between the topics here, we can find another nerve from the brachial plexus. This nerve moves in front of the scapula. If we put the scapula like this, just here, the scapula notch, it moves here to the lateral surface, to the lateral surface, and innervates both the supraspinatus and infraspinatus muscles. This is what we talked about before, and this nerve called the suprascapular nerve. Suprascapular nerve. Suprascapular nerve. So this is the nerve which, uh, if, if we have any damaging or, or problem with this nerve, will uh, uh, you know, uh, cause uh, like a reduction in size of the supraspinatus and infraspinatus muscles in the horse, and this called uh, Sweeney syndrome, Sweeney syndrome, suprascapular nerve. Let's put it to the side. Um, again, now we are going to remove these muscles completely, the surrounding muscles, and focus more on the muscles of the shoulder joint. Before we stop here, I forgot to tell you about this muscle here. It's very developed also in the horse, this one here is the teres major muscle. The teres major muscle is more, you know, we can see it more in the medial view, partially in the lateral view, just this part here. So the teres major muscle originate from the caudal angle and the caudal border of the scapula and inserts to the teres major tuberosity. Again, Terrace major muscle originate from the caudal angle of the scapula and caudal border in this area here and inserts to the, let's put them together again, inserts to this tuberosity here is the terrace major tuberosity. This is the terrace major tuberosity. So, the terrace major muscle is also innervated by the axillary nerve axillary nerve function of it of course is a flexor of the shoulder joint so let's remove the surrounding muscles and i will see you very soon before we leave let me just tell you that this is the axillary artery and this is the big axillary vein which we also cut uh, to remove the four limbs see you later So now we move to the medial uh, uh, surface of the shoulder region and uh, here I would like firstly uh, to show you um, as I described previously that the supraspinatus muscle inserts to the greater and uh, partially to the lesser tubercle and this is how it inserts for, of course, you know, the greater tubercle is there and this is the part of the supraspinatus muscle inserts to the uh, lesser tubercle here, here in this area. So we move it uh, to the side, to the side. And now we can see this muscle, this muscle here. Very interesting muscle starts, if you look exactly from the coracoid process. Where is the coracoid process? Let's go to the scapula again. If you remember, we named this one here in front of the glenoid cavity as a superglenoid tubercle. Part from the superglenoid tubercle highlighted in yellow here is the coraco, coracoid process. And this is the origin of this muscle here. What is the name of this muscle? This is the coracobrachialis muscle. Coracobrachialis muscle. The coracobrachialis muscle originates from uh, coracoid process of the scapula and inserts to the 
medial surface of the humerus. So if we go there, so it inserts to the medial surface of the humerus, of the humerus. This is the coracobrachialis muscle. The coracobrachialis muscle uh, is innervated by uh, um, the musculocutaneous nerve, which we can see here. This is the musculocutaneous nerve. It's another branch from the brachial plexus. So this is the brachial plexus, finally. So musculocutaneous nerve goes, gives branches to the coracobrachial uh, or coracobrachialis muscle and moves finally to this muscle here, as you can see. Sorry, again. Let me just show you. To the biceps brachii. This is the biceps brachii, very strong, very big muscle. And the horse starts or originates from the supraglenoid tubercle again. Yeah, just to remind you, supraglenoid tubercle, this part of the scapula. And after that moves, the tendon of the biceps brachii moves inside the bicipital groove here, here in this area. And finally, it moves, as you can see here, and inserts to the uh, radial tuberosity, medial surface, radial tuberosity, and the medial collateral ligaments uh, here in this area. And at the same time, it inserts or it builds, or let me just make it clear for you, this is good, this is good. This is what's called the lacertus fibrosus or lacertus fibrosus. Lacertus fibrosus, it uh, sp splits from the biceps brachii and moves down and fuses with the extensor carbi radialis, as you can see here. This is extremely important, which helps the horse to stand uh, for a long time without getting tired. So what is the name of this? Is la the lacertus fibrosus, lacertus fibrosus, uh, it's another insertion of the biceps brachii. What is the function of the biceps brachii? According to uh, the origin and insertion, start from the scapula and inserts to the radius and ulna there, radius. So in this case, contraction of uh, the biceps brachii will extend the, extend the shoulder joint, extend the, the shoulder joint, at the same time flexes the elbow joint flexes the elbow joint. So it's extensor of the shoulder joint and flexor of the elbow joint. This muscle, the biceps brachii, is elevated as we described before by the musculocutaneous nerve. Where is it here? This is the musculocutaneous nerve for the innervation of the biceps brachii. If you look exactly, you'll find that this nerve gives some branches to the proximal part of this muscle and after that down there are some other branches for the distal part of the muscle. This is the biceps brachii. In this view, we can also um, find the medial head of the triceps brachii. So this is the medial head of the triceps brachii. So we dissected the tensor muscle of the antibrachial fascia, which we talked about before. So this is the antibrachial fascia, and this is the tensor muscle of this fascia. If you move it to the side, you can find the, the medial head of the triceps brachii. Triceps brachii originates, this medial head originates from the medial proximal surface of the humerus from this area here and inserts to the olecranon. Inserts to the olecranon, it's innervated by the um, uh, the radial nerve, by the radial nerve, where the radial nerve, this is the radial nerve here. This is the radial nerve from the brachial plexus. Like the other heads, as you can see here, it gives branch to this head. Let me just show you again. So this is the radial nerve, which gives branch for the innervation of the medial head of the triceps brachii here. Okay. Just to remind you, the triceps brachii, and, and in this case, the medial head of the triceps brachii is extensor of the elbow joint, okay? Good. In this triangular area here, we can see this small muscle called the anconial muscle. Anconial muscle originate from the uh, humerus here in this area and serves to the olecranon. It's a small muscle located in this area as extensor of the 
uh, elbow joint uh, uh, is also innervated by the radial nerve, by the radial nerve. So this is the, 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 the muscles which we can find here. Let me just before moving and talking about the nerves, show you again, because it wasn't clear previously, you know, this is the tendon or the insertion of the teres major muscle. This is the teres major muscle, again, from the caudal angle of the scapula uh, and from the caudal board of the scapula and inserts to the teres major tuberosity. This area, and this is the tendon of it, where is the teres major tuberosity? If you look, take the look at the media surface here of the humerus, we can find the teres major tuberosity here. Teres major tuberosity media surface of the humerus of the humerus, okay? And now allow me uh, quickly, so here we can also uh, find another small muscle located directly on the uh, joint capsule, joint capsule inserts to the neck of the humerus. Neck of the humerus, uh, it's a little bit developed here in the horse called the articular muscle, articular muscle, musculus articularis. Here and before we move down to the antibrachial region, let me just quickly go through the nerves, which we can see here and belongs to the brachial plexus. Again, here we describe these nerves going to the subscapular uh, muscle, the subscapular nerves, two or three or sometimes more. This nerve here moves in front of the scapula, the suprascapularis nerve, for the innervation of the supraspinatus and infraspinatus muscle. Let's put it on the side. Here, for example, we can see another nerve moves in this triangle area here. This is the axillary nerve. Axillary nerve, which uh, innervates the teres major, as you can see, it gives branches to the teres major. On the way, it gives also branches to the teres minor and finally to the deltoid muscle. This is the axillary nerve. If we move uh, to this nerve here, this nerve here with all of these branches is the radial nerve for the triceps brachii, not only for the triceps brachii, let me just tell you something very important. Keep it in mind that the radial nerve is responsible for the innervation of all extensor muscles, all extensor muscles of the forelimb, except the extensor muscles of the shoulder joint. So that means this nerve uh, innervates all extensor muscles of the elbow joint, including the triceps and conius, the tensor uh, fascia antibrachii, and the extensor muscles of the uh, carpal joint and extensor muscles of the digits, radial nerve. Let's move now to this nerve here. And if you follow this nerve, you will find that, that it moves toward the ulna, toward the ulna. And here you, we will describe later how this nerve moves exactly between the two heads of the flexor carbi ulnars, and this is the ulnar nerve. This is the ulnar nerve, we will talk about it later. The final nerve which we can see here uh, is the median nerve. The median nerve which moves medially here down up to the end of the distal limb and innervates mainly the flexor muscles of the digits and carbos. This is the median nerve, finally, I say it finally, but no, there is another nerve here I forgot to tell you about. It's the musculocutaneous nerve, which is responsible for the innervation of the coracobrachialis muscle and the biceps brachii, and uh, also uh, partially to the brachialis muscle, which we found on the lateral side. That's everything for now. Now we will move down to the antibrachial region and talk about the extensors and flexors of the carbos and digits. See you later.